life as a older me. I feel you holding me. I guess you still molding me. Hopefully, but don't let the evil get close to me. Ah. Busy World back with an interview. You feel what I'm saying? Finally with my guy, ARH. You feel what I'm saying? What's up, bro? Glad to be here, man. Glad you on. You feel what I'm saying? My man is a rapper from Uptown. This is the closest rapper that I did an interview for. You from where again, bro? From Jungle and shit like this. Yeah. Lucas and shit. Yeah, yeah. You from right up the hood. You dig what I'm saying? So, proud. I'm honored to have you on. You dig what I'm saying? So, let's start this off with, like, to get to know you, you feel what I'm saying? So I want to start it off with the name A.R.A.S. Where you get the name A.R.A.S. from, bro? Uh, the name is really a motherfucking combination of, like, my real name and shit, my initials, and a name I just picked up in, like, middle school and shit. Like, mm -hmm. niggas were just calling me Ace and shit because I, um, I let the boy Ace Inferno and shit. Like, this is, like, middle school. So, right, like, right, right, right. I guess it was, like, the Philly. But anybody like, from Philly, yeah, yeah like, you know what I'm saying? Y'all, right, 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 shit like right, that. And right. this was, like, all right, I don't get it, but whatever. Exactly. And then I was, like, damn, I was running through names and shit like that. And it, it was just weird because I'm, like, I can't pick no fucking, I ain't about to call myself young this or little this or right right whatever was popping at the time yeah, when you started you know right, 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 right you know what right, i'm gonna right, stick to right. the basics a r ace right dang done so exactly. why you say why you use ace with an s you feel what i'm saying instead of a c e because everybody was ace with the c and right, shit right, that, right, that name right, is so right, common right. Yeah. ace corleone uh -huh. ace dollars ace, ace money. anything Young right, ace, right you know what i'm saying so i was like all right but at first it was just like how me spelled you know with a dollar sign uh -huh. it was a dollar sign even i'm like you can't use the dollar sign when you like making certain profiles. You gotta use the S. That's right, right. So I'm like, right. let me just use the S. So mm -hmm. like currency get that problem and shit. Like you look up his mixtapes and shit. Uh huh. It's a lot of those you don't catch the dollar sign or they get cut off or it be invisible uh -huh. sometimes and shit like that. But exactly. I used the S because it was different and shit. So. Mm -hmm. But it was original, like, originally you wanted to do it for Mace and have it as a dollar sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause that's how that's I dope, that's Mason dope, shit. that's dope, that's dope. But I don't know, you know, when you, when a nigga asks you that in other interviews, you always spin it, but no, the A me, this, the S me, that. Right. <laughs> you know what no, saying? but what you even, like, the way you broke it down was even dope, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. How, like, it was at that point where you needed a name, and at that time, it was a lot of people doing the little this or the young that, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. But you stuck to the basics of your initials with the ace, you feel what I'm saying? And you had a reason why you used the S instead of the C. It was basic, but it was some real shit. Like you said, somebody could come on and say, oh, no, the A stand for this and give me a whole acronym. Yeah. But this shit might not be genuine or real. Yeah, it's some shit they, they just sat down and like, that makes sense. All right, yeah, I'm exactly. Like, they got an interview. They like, all right, let me come with some some, some, some different smart shit. shit. Yeah, exactly. Like, smart, yeah, right, cool. like, come on with the bullshit. You feel <laughs> what I'm saying? So when did you start rapping, though, bro? Shit. I probably was rapping probably like 13 or some shit like that. Okay. Like my sister put me on to that shit. Uh-huh. Like, she used to rap, but she wouldn't really like... She never went to like no studio or shit that I know of and shit. She would just like write raps on her book. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Do she like, still rap? Probably, but not like as much as, you know, like I would probably see it often. You know, it's it's weird because like she, I would catch her like doing like rapping and shit like that. Mm -hmm. And I would just be air hustling like on, you know, young boy, young boy and shit, me and Lucy and shit. I'm like, what's she doing? She's right. really talking and shit. Right, like, right, right. Like, what's happening? Right, 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 right. So I was like, damn, I want. I want to, you know what I'm saying, see if I could fuck with that shit, how she fuck with it. Mm -hmm. And just one day, I just was in my head, I wrote a couple of things down. She was downstairs with her friend or whatever, and they was rapping. I was like, I got something. And she was like, oh, shit, like, you hot. Like, uh -huh. And then I just kept moving around. Once I got that syllable of approval, I was like, I'm going to keep writing. Right, 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 then, right. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I think I was about 17 or 18, like my 18th birthday, so I got some bread together. Uh -huh. I went to the studio and shit. Uh -huh. I'm from Philly. And finally took that shit Yeah, once I started doing that, I just... Fell in love with the process shit. and yeah, all that, that shit. Like, that was probably like oh nine maybe. Right, right. The first time I was in the studio, but uh huh. Thirteen and shit. Thirteen until so I was like that's like two thousand two. Right. So you was writing since you was like thirteen, but then like the first time in the studio was like oh nine when you was like eighteen, something yeah. eighteen. It was just I had like fucking folders full of raps and shit like that. You like, I gotta get this shit off my chest. Yeah, because I, I really looked up one day and was like, yo, this drum from like, man, great. Damn, this drum from, no. Right. Yeah, this old as shit. Like, paper be old as ripping on the end. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Falling they, apart yeah, and shit. I don't know how the shit go. Right, I'm right. I got latest shit. Uh-huh. That shit crazy. I am. 
So when did Benevolent come from there, from that process? Like, how did you, like, was Benevolent your first project or did you have a project previously before Benevolent? You know what? Benevolent was really, like, I, I treated Benevolent like an album. Uh-huh. I treated that shit like, it was like, I, treated, I can tell you treated it like an album because it had like, an album type feel to it. It didn't feel like a mixtape. Like, you just said, all right, I'm going to... A bunch of songs yeah, together. Like, I treated that shit like Def Jam gave me a check. And right. I ran with that shit, like, <laughs> like, what up? I got y'all. I'm yeah, right like, back. Yeah, I'm going right. to give y'all everything. Because the process right. for that was our, I did mixtapes. Mm. I, I dropped in there two mixtapes every year since I've been recording music and shit like that. So okay, like, so you got like a couple mixtapes out. Yeah, like I probably. Let me where see. can I check your mixtapes out at? Audio where can, Mac. That's, audio that's where Mac. I got all my shit at. Audio, right, audio Mac. Mac. You can check all those mixtapes out. And the thing is, if you check that shit up on YouTube, all this Indian shit come up. Uh-huh. So when you type my shit up on YouTube, you gotta type in like ARA's music or type in a song of mine and shit for me to pop right, up and right, shit. Right, the name of the song and some shit like that. Yeah, because right. you just type ARA's, all this Indian shit to pop up and then you go, this nigga ain't on this John. Ah, fuck this shit. Bro. Right, 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 right. So what made you, all right, so from the process of dropping two mixtapes a year from this time you started recording into dropping Benevolent, what, what forced it? Like, what pushed you towards, like, all right, let me drop an album, like something that I feel as though is an album and taking it that serious, you feel what I'm saying? On some real shit, it kind of, all right, it kind of stemmed from my mom passing away and shit like that, like February mm-hmm. of 2015 and shit. Okay. So, and then I was going through a bunch of shit, like my pop passed away in like 2012, grandma passed away in 2014, mm-hmm. mom passed away in 2015 and shit, so, in my writing, I wasn't just writing raps and shit like that, I was like really, I had like concepts and songs and ideas and it was like, all right. And some shit was just some some freestyle shit. I would catch like that my fuck with this beat, right. and I got a verse to go with this joint. So mm-hmm. bang. So it was just more detailed and more more calculated than how I normally do shit. Cause normally yeah. when, I, when I record and work on projects, I'll go to the studio once for that song. Like I'll mm-hmm. be like, all right, this is the song, and however it come about, out, this is how it's coming out. It's Y'all coming getting out it like that, that right? Right. Yeah, but, like, <laughs> You was like, all right, I no, recorded like, songs. This is my baby, right? Yeah, here. I recorded every song. Right. Went back to the studio. And I told boy, listen, we're going to run down every song and we're going to mix this joint mm-hmm. until I feel as though, all right, I fuck with it. Mm-hmm. It's done. Right. You don't need to touch this shit. Right. You ain't got to add another nothing. Like, mm-hmm. And then that's how I, I operate. And then I just, I ain't really hit the like, business and marketing and shit. So I just was looking for other outlets other than that piff and fucking other shit, SoundCloud and shit. So I was like, right. you know what? I'm going to try Bandcamp. That mm-hmm. was my move. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to do Bandcamp. Uh-huh. I had that shit on Bandcamp for like a good probably like two months before I started putting on other platforms just so I could build awareness for it. Right. But Bandcamp was exclusively my spot for that just because I had so much detail in it. Like I include, mm-hmm. If you look it up on Bandcamp, I include the nigga who made the artwork, uh-huh. the nigga who engineered, just like how mm-hmm. you would read the credits in an album and shit like right. that. When you, when niggas would go buy like niggas' albums and you go through the books and shit like if niggas did that, mm-hmm. you go through the books and shit like that, Right. you see who... Engineers, I this. definitely did that. Like, featured when they, on this, right back in the day, yeah, when you really who, liked the artists. The nigga who executive shit. produced this joint, mm-hmm. like I did all that mm-hmm. for that. You look project. at the names that you look at all the names that's associated with the projects, then, yeah. Like individually with the with the individual songs and tracks and shit, like yeah. And I was so in my bag that. that I ain't even get features for that shit. Like if you, that's why it. that's a, qu- a a question that I ask with most of my artists is like, who did your artwork and who like who do you go to producing wise and engineering wise, you feel what I'm saying? Because I, I like to know that type of shit, you feel what I'm saying? Like yeah. that shit is intriguing to me. And, and keep it a hundred, all my shit was so tight, like the circle was so tight for this project. Uh-huh. I didn't even have to use a bunch of people. Right. The nigga that That's engineered how be, this shit took my pictures. That's how it's supposed to be. The nigga who made the cover worked in the studio that I was going to. So all my shit was right there. So this was like, bro, damn, I would see him making beats for fucking niggas and all this other shit. And it's just like, damn, yo, um, yo, make my cover real quick. All right, I'll pay you whenever, you know I mean? Right. Oh, shit, damn, you got a camera and shit. Yo, can, you, can we go outside and take these pictures real right, quick for my picture? Right, right, right. You know what I mean? That and simple. So, yeah, so I didn't have to go through the whole, oh, shit, I got to call this bull. Damn, I got to call this nigga. Got to look on Instagram, search yeah, Google, Yeah, I got to DM this nigga, hope, people, hope right. you respond. Like, oh. Then, like, then it's like, I got to see what his price is like. And yeah, this, that, and like, third. Right, right. You know I'm how that be. shit. And my mistake was I didn't do no videos for that shit. but. Right. Definitely, when when I'm, I'm I'm shooting for March or April, I definitely start shooting 
like retro videos that I did mm -hmm. for old projects in like 2019 because it still it still makes sense. Right, right, like, right. Day, like, it's still relevant. Some, it's definitely still relevant. Yeah, like, so it don't even matter. Want to listen to it? You know, so, yeah, it's still motherfuckers who never heard this shit. We don't know who I am and shit like exactly. that. As big as the city is and how little the city is, uh -huh. it's still motherfuckers. That's that. That's the oxymoron of the city is so big and so small at the same fucking time. Right, like, you know what I'm saying? Like. The fact that you know a nigga I went to school with, that right. he put you on my shit, and it just was like, damn. Right, right. You do this type, you blog and shit like right, that. Right, right. You look for artists and entertainers uh -huh. and shit like that exactly. to, to interview, to build uh -huh. your thing. So exactly. The, the stars aligning, you knowing him, him uh -huh. knowing me, exactly. us meeting up to do this and shit like that. Like, That's what it's meant to be. Yeah, exactly. like, right, right, right. It's all meant to be at the end of the day. Let me see if this is still recording. We're going to get into benevolent. Yeah, man. Yeah, that shit's still pumping, baby. You fully charged that drum? What? No. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I had to run and, and do some business and shit. That's why, like, when you was coming in, that shit was perfect timing for real, yeah. for real. But, yeah, man. So, uh, let's get into Benevolent a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. How did you come up with the track list? I'm going to keep it on, honey. I would just, I had this shit on shuffle for so long uh -huh. that I found a shuffle that was like, damn, this makes sense. Right. All I do is probably change like two or three songs and shit, like the intro up, uh -huh. outro down, uh -huh. maybe this song in the middle and shit right. like that. And I was like, done. Like, how many how many shuffles did you listen to? Listen, <laughs> I, I got done. I got done recording that shit. Let me see. I probably start recording in like, maybe like April, May. Mm -hmm. April, maybe. I did all that shit in probably about three months, maybe. Like the whole process to get the whole get, get done, done, like yeah, three like, months, yeah, three months probably because I if I really locked in in the studio, right, like, right, right. And it's the fucked up thing done. was this before I had kids, so I ain't had no responsibility, so um, I, I ain't had a problem with eating news for a week. I ain't had a problem with saving checks and then like just being broke, like right, as long right, as I got right, a transfer right, to get to right, work. Cause you knew what the, the end goal was, you yeah. So and then my was. heart was in this shit, and mm -hmm. I had a song on there that was for my mom, so it was like if I put this project out, this shit really got to be. Right, some shit like I gotta look back on this and be like, and that's problems. definitely one, and that song is definitely a fan favorite from everybody that I play benevolent for. Mm -hmm. and I appreciate mean. that just because it's like I did it for my mom and shit, so it was like I had to make sure I did it right. Right, and you Even, can tell that you 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 took your time and you put your passion and you put your heart and soul into that track. Hell yeah, you feel what I'm saying? So, uh, who did you work with, engineer and producing wise? Shout out to my man Maul Geeks. That nigga is a fucking chop god. Like uh -huh, uh -huh. that nigga is different with his <laughs> shit. Like, that nigga. I'm a, listen. I knew the nigga was special when I think the first time I went to his studio, like mm -hmm. 2013, bro. Mm -hmm. I recorded two songs. Mm -hmm. He one of the niggas that. When you record a song, you could have it in your head like, all right, I'm going to say the lines this way, and this is how the song going to sound and shit. Mm -hmm. You get out that fucking booth, and you sit down or whatever and shit, and you go through your phone. You know how you get niggas who rap? You go through your phone and shit, you hear your verse and shit. Right. Then you on Instagram talking about, yeah, I'm just, I'm cooking up, got some new shit. Right. You'll get back into the session, and the nigga be like, how this sound? And he done added some fucking beat drops, shit that you only hear from, like, established artists. You be like, oh. Right. I ain't even thinking yeah, of that. So, right, like, right, 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 right. Prime right. example, uh, dreams That's come true and shit like that. Uh -huh. like, the whole um, uh, it's it's the it's the first verse like uh, something about the devil and shit like that. Hope uh -huh. you don't catch me. I'm gonna book it on him and shit. Uh -huh. That joint, like, the whole demonic voice and shit. Oh, like that. I'm like, I know exactly what you when when your voice got deeper right there. Yeah, that I didn't tell him that shit. Like he just and that's that a great that shit, like, thing of working with like. Other dope artists when they put other shit in that you don't expect, but it's perfect. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's some shit that you like, bro. I did not think of this shit, but that shit is perfect. Like that's God, like, that's exactly what we needed. Yeah. So when he did that shit, I just was in my head like, oh, this nigga different. Like, right, right, right. I ain't gotta right. tell him nothing. I right. he got his own ear for this shit. I uh -huh. can just do my verse, make sure the shit sound perfect. Yeah, that's all I gotta worry about. I can sit down and get high as I want. Like, exactly, right, right, I know right. it's in good hands. Like, yep. You know what I'm saying? It's yep. like a doctor. You know it's gonna come shit, back like. and it's gonna be in good wealth. You feel yeah, so, in good health, you man. Oh, yeah. So, that's definitely dope as shit. So, he did all your tracks? All that shit, bro. Damn! All that shit. Shout, what's his name again? Maul Gates. Maul Gates. He Factory Studio. If y'all uh -huh. looking for a nigga to fuck with y'all shit and you ain't gotta fucking be all on the nigga back and say, yo, bro, I want this here, I want that. I mean, you could do that. He understand uh -huh. exactly what. Uh -huh. He know that language. But if you just want to have a song just, like, fucking pop out and just be so crazy, I definitely recommend recording at the Heat Factory. Okay. okay. That nigga is Shout out to Heat Factory and Maul Gates. Gates you know what I'm saying? You feel what I'm saying? But, um, what was your... 
Okay, so that's kind of, I already kind of know the answer to this question, but what was it like making this track and what did it mean making this track for As I Reminisce? Man, uh, you know what? I, I kind of was like sitting on that shit for a minute, bro. Like, mm -hmm. I was I want to do something for my mom, but I don't just want to do anything. I ain't just going to mm -hmm. be doing no Dear Mama song just right. because. Right. Just that's because. like the trend and yeah, that's what you like, got to do as an artist, right? Yeah, like, because then I'm going to look back and I'm going to be like, I could have did You didn't, and you didn't pay homage yeah, to the right, like, right, 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 right. So when I did it, I, like, I got to make sure I put certain shit in, like how my mom used to, like, say things that she used to say to me and shit like that, how she used to act, like, I got to put these things. So when other people hear the song, they're like, yo, that's your mom. Like, your mom was like that. Right. So when I was writing that shit, it probably took me a few months to finish that shit in the sense of, like, before I started recording. Mm -hmm. So when I was pinning that shit, I probably was stuck for probably like a week or so. And I just was just catching vibes like, mm -hmm. damn, all right, just go with that. This some shit she would say, this, that. And then when I got to the studio, like I said, he made that shit just sound different. That whole third verse when the beat drop and shit like that. Right, that's right, that shit. Like, right, right, right. I right. kind of had this shit. The verse like you end, said, he, he got that yeah, connection and that vibe. The verse and then the hook come back. Mm -hmm. But he was like, yo, I think it'll sound better if you do this. Mm -hmm. man, say, how this sound? He played that shit. I'm like, ew, that shit sound Perfect. way better than what I had yeah, going on. Do that shit, bro. Rock with it. Let's yeah, rock let's with that. it. Let's rock with it. it. Yeah, man. That's dope. That's dope. But man. I definitely made sure when I recorded that, John, uh -huh. that shit had to be 100% perfect. Right. I couldn't have no flaws, no stumbles. I couldn't have no fuck ups. Right. That shit had to be flawless. Right, right. It wasn't going to be one of those drones that you, all right, you're yeah. going to get it how you get it. It's like, no, I'm going to definitely make sure yeah. this is, that it's going to it's going to touch you the way it's meant to touch you. You feel what I'm saying? It's, it's like going to bring a, that punch that it's meant to. For me, it's like when a nigga hear, uh, they remind, they reminisce over you by, uh, the, uh, I can't, I want to say fucking CL Smooth, but it's not CL Smooth. Uh -huh. I, mean, I don't know. But they, they I know Pete that. Rock and them, uh -huh. though. Uh -huh. Pete Rock. I think uh -huh. it is CL Smooth, but I'm going to say Pete Rock and them. Uh -huh. That song special uh -huh. to them. Uh -huh. Same way how a uh, song for my mama by Boys the Men is and shit. Mm -hmm. Same how Dear Mama is the Tupac and shit like you know what I'm saying? It was one of them joints for me. So it was like, if I do this, it gotta be right. I need right. that shit flawless. Exactly. So how often do you listen to As I Reminisce? I'm gonna keep it 100. Like, I, I go through periods where I go months without listening to that joint. Mm -hmm. Just because when I recorded it, I listened to it a million times right. to make sure it was right. perfect. Right, right. So I kind of got tired of hearing it because exactly. like, I know right. the fucking right. song. Like, exactly, exactly. I made yeah, sure I feel this shit was so perfect that. before I put it out to let other people hear it. Uh -huh. So I'm going to keep it 100. I probably listen to it probably like once or twice every month. Right. Just to be like, damn, I did that. Right, like, right. Like just, just I to toot my own horn and shit, but like, I did that shit. Like, right, right. I definitely can dig you on that.